Okay, hello. So, um, in this video, I'm going to be giving instruction on how to do mudita practice, which is one of the Brahma Viharas. So, how to do it, but like what it is, what the benefits are, why you want to do it, etc. So, okay, good. We'll get started with that. So, all right, um, mudita is the third Brahma Vihara. It's um, I think one of the most neglected Brahma Viharas, and you don't hear much about it at all. And now let me also go back and say what the Brahma Viharas. The Brahma Viharas are the divine abodes. It, they're said to be the optimal states of consciousness, which um, the Buddha never left. He was always in one of the four Brahma Viharas, supposedly. So, okay, good. Mudita. So, Sympathetic joy, appreciative joy. So it's to take joy in the good fortune of others, the well-being of others. So mudita is, so a lot of, so the way I think about the first three Brahma Viharas, metta, loving kindness, karuna, compassion, and mudita, is that they're manifestations of love. Metta is a kind of neutral or kind of a generic love, a generic friendliness. Compassion is what love does when it sees the difficulty and the brokenness of the world. And then mudita is what love does when it sees something to celebrate, when there's joy, when there's good qualities of others, when there's happiness in others and also in oneself. So, okay, that's what mudita is. All right, great. Um, also, I'll say mudita is the antidote to envy. So it's a, so envy and jealousy are the far enemy of mudita. And here's a quote. I think I, I don't quite know where I got this from. When one sees or hears that some person's qualities are esteemed by others and that he is at peace and is joyful, one thinks, sadhu, sadhu, may he continue joyful for a long time. Okay, so why would we want to cultivate mudita? So, it's actually short-sighted to only celebrate your own joys. It's better and, in a sense, wiser to, to be able to celebrate the joys of others and to take joy from that. So your joy grows to the extent that you can appreciate others and their good qualities. Also, mudita directly militates against depression, right? Depression is a lot of things, right? But one thing it is, is the inability to feel joy. And so when we practice the skill of feeling joy, we undermine depression. Also, you know, um, mudita is a means for developing intimacy and connection with others. The, and, they, and mudita makes you trustworthy to others, right? We all long to be able to share our explorations with someone else and that they be thrilled for us and that they take joy in our joy. Um, Jordan Peterson, in one of his uh, one of his talks I listened to maybe a year or two ago, he was talking about how what makes a good friend is that they want to see you succeed. That is mudita. So mudita is again a training to be a good friend. Also, I think that there's an interesting kind of wisdom angle to mudita practice. When we learn to take joy in others' good qualities, there's a kind of seeing through narrow thinking, right? Like, it makes sense, aha, yes, I'll be happy about my good fortune. And then others, maybe I don't care, or maybe I'm a little jealous. That seems to kind of make a certain logical sense. But there's something, I'll 
call it adaptively unreasonable about taking joy in the good qualities of others. Okay, so what should we watch out for when we're doing this practice? So it's said that of the four Brahma Viharas, that mudita is the hardest, that people struggle with it the most. So when you're doing this practice, like with any practice, especially when it's new, there's going to be some groping and grasping starting out. So we have to be really sweet and kind with ourselves. All right, now when should you do the practice? And I'll get into um, how we do it here in a moment, but when should you do it? So I would recommend, you know, to do like a body of work on mudita. Like, so do some, maybe a week or a month of every day, 30 minutes of formal practice to, to cultivate mudita and this kind of industrial strength. And then once you've started to cultivate it a bit, start doing micro hits of it in your daily life. So bring it to your life whenever you see some good quality of, of someone or whenever someone comes to you with their positive explorations like oh look i'm you know like you know the child versions look daddy here a rock look a rock or look at this flower that kind of thing whenever you see anyone that's celebrating anything like really try to open up to that and feel this quality of shared joy of empathetic joy in your daily life okay good so then now we're going to get into how to do the practice so with this practice the primary object of the meditation is the the emotional feeling and the mental state now those are very related um, of sympathetic joy of joy itself right so, but how do we sustain that? How do we make that happen? We, we can use any number of means. First off, I'd advise smiling while you meditate. You should always smile when you meditate, but especially with the Brahma Viharas. It's so, okay, we're gonna put a physical smile on our face. Second, we're gonna use a visualization. So, we're gonna envision ourselves smiling envision ourselves feeling good then we're going to envision the object that we're thinking about envision them smiling feeling good and then some quality of this kind of love and joy moving from us to them so that's the visualization part now there there's also the option to do a verbalization part that really helps and the verbalization and the visualization support the mental state of and the emotional state of mudita, sympathetic joy. So good. Now the verbalization, so there's many different verbalizations, and you should use one that works for you. But for me, the one that I like is, oh, so-and-so, when I reflect on your virtues or on some quality of you, it fills me with joy. Or maybe just generically, oh, so-and-so, when I reflect on you, I'm filled with joy. So something to that effect, like, oh, so-and-so, when I think of you, I experience joy. Okay, good. All right, and now, so typically, you, the Brahma Viharas are practiced in this kind of format, and I'll go over the format now, but you should play around with this and you really want to make it your own. Okay, good. So now what about this format? So the format generally is you start with a simple, like easy to love, beloved object. That can be a child or a pet, something that a, a, a person or a pet that you have an uncomplicated relationship with. Then you go to a benefactor, a mentor. Then you go to yourself, wishing yourself mudita. Then you go to another loved one, do a series of loved ones, maybe three loved ones. And then you go to a neutral person. Then the enemy, which is very important with the neutral person, then even more so with the enemy, we're learning to not drop discernment, rather, but to develop unconditional joy. So joy in many situations, a joy that's unconditional 
based on the object that we experience. That doesn't mean that we become a doormat. We still maintain our discriminating wisdom, our discernment. That sh discernment and discriminating wisdom should actually grow as we deepen in the practice. We never check it at the door, but we do want to work on this heart quality of, of unconditional joy. Okay, good. So that's that's the traditional form. And then there's also a kind of what I call a geographic version of the traditional form. So you start with yourself. So, oh, may when I reflect on my own qualities, it fills my heart with joy. Then when I reflect on the good qualities of all the beings in this room, it fills me with joy. When I reflect on the, the good qualities of all the beings in this building, it fills me with joy. And then on and on, geographically extending until you get to throughout all space and time. That's Those are the kind of two versions that are very traditional. And then there's another version that I like doing, which is where you use either the six or the ten paramis, the paramitas. Um, I just think this is like kind of obvious and natural to do mudita with the paramis. So for example, you can think of a teacher or someone you admire, and then you can go through, let's just say, the six paramis, or the six Mahayana paramitas. So, oh, so-and-so, when I reflect on your generosity, it fills me with joy. Oh, so-and-so, when I reflect on your good ethics, your virtue, it fills me with joy. Oh, so-and-so, when I reflect on your patience, your forbearance, it fills me with joy. Oh, so-and-so, when I reflect on your determination, energy, <clears throat> it fills me with joy. Oh, so-and-so, when I reflect on your ability to concentrate, focus, and control the mind, it fills me with joy. Oh, so-and-so, when I reflect on your deep wisdom, it fills me with joy. Okay, so those are the three versions of mudita uh, in terms of how to practice it. I think that pretty well sums it up. Um, if you have any questions, just write them below and I'll respond. Also, um, I'm just getting this channel started and up and running, so it'd be great if you'd uh, subscribe and Looking forward to interfacing more with all of you. Okay, bye-bye.